Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by Greg Moffat, Johnny of Robot Monster, coming to Blu-ray July 25th. It's loaded with a lot of cool features, including 3D glasses from the 3D Film Archive. So uh, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm doing very well. I actually do have some allergies, but besides that, I'm doing well. <laughs> Where exactly so are you? I'm in Massachusetts on Cape Cod. I'm in California. Right, right. The opposite ends of the of the country. Yep. So, did you ever think when you made Robot Monster when you're 10 years old that's like 70 years later it would be something you'd be talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> to, to to put it succinctly, the answer seriously no. But you never know. Right. Because. When I was watching the uh, your interview on there, I was surprised that you had not seen the movie at that time. You, it was only uh, when you're an adult you got to see Robot Monster. My mom would never let Sharon or I. Sharon's my older sister. She had a lengthy career with RKO, but she would never. My mom would never let either of us see ourselves on film as children. She didn't want to want us to be affected by what was on the screen mm -hmm. so yeah i never saw it i never saw it from start to finish until 2013 oh wow it, so you uh, never even thought like man I, I need to see this at some point no, <laughs> no <laughs> I, I never had that urge <laughs> uh -huh. and and i and i wouldn't have known how to see it you know it was completely That's out of release within mm -hmm. a year i'm sure uh, and without Michael Medved's uh, decision to produce his book on the worst films ever made, I, I don't know that it would it would be popular still today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm certain that his review and others like them, like his that followed, brought prominence to the film that it never would have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. Uh, along those lines, um, was there a point in time like you just didn't even want to tell people you were involved in Robot Monster? And did there come a point like, oh, I'm going to embrace this? You know, this is, uh, you know, people love this movie. Actually, both things happened. Um, when I heard about the Medved uh, review, my head went straight down <laughs> and I was not very proud. It's pretty difficult to walk around knowing you were one of the principals in one of the worst films ever made. <laughs> but but I saw the movie for the first time with a crowd at the Chinese theater during the World 3D Expo in Hollywood. Uh, it was either 2013 or 2014. Mm -hmm. And Bob Fermanek invited me to uh, appear. Claudia Barrett was still with us in those days, and she was there. And that was the first time we had met since the filming. Um, and people actually enjoyed the film. Uh, and at that point in time, I began to stand a little taller. I don't think there's anything more important to an entertainer than to know that people enjoyed the work. Right. Um, and when you're, you know, when all you hear about a film is how bad it is, you <laughs> you wonder how anybody could enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then I saw it myself again with a crowd when they had the uh, Los Angeles premiere for the uh, restoration about three weeks ago. I was in the theater, which, which was jam-packed. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. um, and... The people gave me a standing ovation both before and after the film was shown, and um, they were appreciative of the remarks that I shared with them, again, both before and after. Uh, I keep meeting people who say, man, I've seen your film, and I love it, and 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 so attitudinally, yeah, I've changed 180 degrees since the 70s. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. And uh, I know you've done like conventions. How has that experience? What's that experience been like? The first one I ever did was in Memphis in 2008. And I went to, uh, it was a celebration of Superman, 
and uh, oh, the Lone Ranger was the other. Oh, nice. And uh, I had not ever been in a Lone Ranger episode, but I did perform with George Reeves in an episode with Superman. And uh, in the off hours there, they would show other works of the divided cast. And they, <laughs> they included <laughs> Robot Monster. It was about 1030 at night. There was about 40 people in the room. It was a, a, a terrible mashup of the film, uh, as you might guess. You know, it was long before the restoration. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I read a, a review recently talking about how my performance provided comedy relief for the film. I'm not sure if Phil Tucker would have been appreciative of that <laughs> <coughs> comment. But at the same time, and actually, I wasn't shooting for any comedy. Mm -hmm. Although I did always hold my head a little proud over... Uh, the one line in the film that I think probably there are two important lines in the film. The monster has one. Um, I must yet. I cannot mm -hmm. when he's talking about how to deal with the woman. And mine was, uh, you look like a pooped out pinwheel. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's one of the more memorable lines of all the movies that have ever been filmed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's something to be very proud of, I think. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm becoming more and more proud of it, I suppose, yeah. as time goes by. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, you mentioned the director, Phil. Uh, what was he like on set? And uh, you know, like, uh, you know, what what kind of movie did he think he was making? You know, you're asking me questions to that a 10 year old would never even. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 And, and so I don't have, I don't have much to say to you on that regard. Yeah. I, I can say that in terms of doing the filming there, you know, it was a four day shoot mm -hmm. and there were not a lot of retakes or, uh, ways to change, uh, performances. If I had any direction in that regard, it would have come from Phil and my mom who was, uh, at that point in time, my older sister had a long career with RKO, I think I mentioned before, but mm -hmm. um, mom had been a stage mother for 10, 12 years at that point in time, mm -hmm. and she knew her way around the sound stage. And um, both she and my dad had come to California to be involved in the entertainment industry anyway. So she had, she'd done a little theater when she was in high school and and uh, she and my dad met doing little theater in uh, Los Angeles when they both came here. Mm -hmm. My dad from Indiana, my mom from Oregon. And uh, I got as much direction from her throughout my career uh, as I got from uh, most of the directors. So what kind of direction w was she giving you? Well, she actually taught me to read very early. I was probably three and a half or four, and I was running along with my older sister for films that she was working on. When my mom didn't have time to do it, I would cue her and, and read the dialogue, and et cetera. <laughs> Pardon me. And it, and it actually led to my first ever job in a film with Sharon when I was four. Um, but she would talk to me about inflection. She talked to me about uh, physical moves, you know, when to shrug, when not to, when to bow my head, when not to, when to, you know, the kinds of, 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 of physical actions that you would go through while doing a film. Mm -hmm. you know, something that... Yeah, I was just to say you talked about you know like the you wouldn't have thought of what the director was thinking about when you're ten, but uh, some of the stuff you probably would have thought about like uh, the cave itself, Bronson Cave. Like, uh, was that just fun to play around in? Oh yeah, um, you know, uh, Bronson Canyon's been the site of external shots for a wide variety of films and TV mm -hmm. shows over the years. And the other part of the film was shot in what's now the northern parking lot of the Do of Dodger Stadium in Chavez. Oh, wow. And uh, 
So that area was really chunky. But, you know, a chance to run around in the mountains in March, <laughs> not all bad. Yeah. It's, so we have a connection here because uh, as you talk about in the commentary track, Bronson Cave has been shut down and you can no longer film there. And I'm one of the last people that was filmed there in my movie that's playing festivals right now. And so, uh, yes, uh, as I'm backwards, Bob in the movie end zone two, and, um, and we filmed it at Bronson cave. So when I heard that, that you can no longer film there, I was like, this is, it was wild for me anyway, to be there because you know, back cave there and all these movies. And then oh, I yeah. thought, wow, it's actually, I'm actually one of the last people. So we have a connection. Outstanding. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know if you guys really talk too much about this or anything. How about the bubbles? Were the bubbles in the script? And uh, when you're there, was there like a bubble machine that's just like pumping out the bubbles? Well, there was a bubble machine. I mean, you're right. you, you can see it in the film. It was, <laughs> if you look at the pictures of the cave and you see all the radio equipment on one side and the screen that he talks to great guidance to on the other side, the bubble machine was behind all the radio equipment. I think okay. that's pretty evident. Watch, watching, watching the film, that seems to be where the bubbles are coming from. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, w- was that in the script that there'd be bubbles, or was that just something they added, like when you're filming? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I heard it was a last minute thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a good friend. Uh, Eric Curland, who runs a business called 3D Space in Los Angeles. And uh, he seems to think he, he's got a copy of George Nader's script, the original script. So oh, I wow. could ask him that. I could ask him that question and see if there are any notations. But right now, I can't answer the question for yeah, you. Yeah, that's interesting. And how about the so how about the look of Robot yeah. Monster? Uh, did you know what he would look like before you're on set and you see him for the first time? Was that like explained yeah. at all? No, no, not at all. We met George. Um, he wasn't in costume on the first day. At, uh, when I first met him, is probably a better way to say it. <clears throat> but uh, very friendly, uh, great sense of humor. Um, both Paula, uh, the young lady that played my sister, and I got along well with him. He was fun. And uh, I got the impression from the rest of the uh, of the cast that uh, they thought he was an okay guy. I, I assume he couldn't see too well out of the out of the mask, and and he's got this giant suit on. He's running around. Did was there any time like he fell or tripped over anything? You know, I don't recall. It's hard for me to think that there might not have been an episode like that. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I wasn't. You know, the, uh, if you've seen the film since it was redone, you know, there's a, a lot of him walking around through the, yeah. the mountainous area. Mm-hmm. And yeah. in most of those cases, I wasn't involved in the filming, except when he was chasing me. <laughs> right. uh, what, what was that scene like to shoot uh, when he's uh, quote unquote killing you? Not to spoil uh, Robot Monster for everybody. <laughs> well, it was, uh, I didn't have to work real hard at playing dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were no close ups or anything that showed, you know, me with my tongue hanging out while I'm getting strangled or anything like that. At least none that I recall. And if there were, they got cut because they're not in the film now. I never saw daily rushes, so I don't know what might have wound up on the cutting room floor mm-hmm. and uh the guy who does the voice john brown for roman roman um yeah. was he like on set at all like could you hear what the voice would sound like or was <laughs> that something you didn't know about until you saw the movie that's an interesting question um i don't have any specific memory of him uh or of hearing the dialogue although in some cases, I must have heard the dialogue because it would because it would have been a cue for my lines. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they were read off screen uh, with the sound down, or if there was a signboard that gave the 
they gave the line that I was to respond to uh, when did, when when I had scenes with the monster. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I really I really don't know. I would think that I heard the lines rather than the other two options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, when, so I saw, when, I did go on, sorry. Whether it was John or not, I can't tell you. Right. So, uh, you know, I saw the restored version. I saw it in 3d and uh, it looks great. The best I've ever seen it. And uh, so they did a oh, great yeah. job with that. It's a uh, very fun to watch it in 3d. <laughs> One of the reviews I read <laughs> talks, talked about my performance as being the comic relief for the film. <laughs> I'm not sure Phil would have been happy with that comment. But, <laughs> but in any case, I think, you know, he was playing it straight. Yeah, I think that's I part of the charm. He, I don't think he was looking for comedy. Mm-hmm. So he I have had. a question. Of the, the, okay. the, the, the opening short, Stardust in Your Eyes, um, I know you didn't see the movie uh, until 2013, but uh, was that part of it when you saw the the uh, premiere in 2013? No, no, I didn't see that. Uh, they had the L.A. showing three weeks ago, uh, and that was the first time I'd seen Slick uh, mm-hmm. and his work. He was a pretty talented fellow. Yeah, did great impressions. It was at first though. I thought, did I put in the wrong movie though? Because I was like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. But it was, but it was, uh, it was interesting that they included that. Yeah, they. I'm, I'm sure they felt like they needed quite a bit more to go with the film as extras uh, to make it more interesting for those people that were that were going to buy it. Mm-hmm. So you even know, though you would, yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, even though you didn't see the movie, and uh, but what you were saying, though, adding the stuff to, to make it a feature instead of a short, because there's also a lot of uh, dinosaurs that don't necessarily have much to do with the movie, but they pop up <laughs> in, in the film. Yes, they do. <laughs> From <laughs> 1 million BC, 30 years previously. <laughs> uh, it was yeah. pretty funny. Uh-huh. You know, I, I walked around for a lot of years not being very proud of this work. Uh, especially after Michael Medved's uh, decision to write a book about the 10 worst films ever made and Robot Monster made the list. Uh, that's hard to walk around with me as a performer being in one of the, uh, a principal performer in one of the worst films ever made. <laughs> but when I saw the film in uh, at, the, at the expo and then again uh, three weeks ago with an audience both times the audience enjoyed themselves and everywhere I've gone um, had the opportunity to go to since uh, I started doing conventions and such um, Mm -hmm. more and more people tell me how much they like the film and gee we have parties every once in a while and show this film and so as a performer I think my attitude about having been in the film has changed about 180 degrees because I don't think there's anything more important to a performer than to know that the people who watched the work actually enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And, and it seems like a whole lot of people have, I think Medved had a lot to do with uh, resuscitating uh, the film in terms of people's interest in it. Mm-hmm. And of course, Bob Furman X work and uh, in the restoration uh, has has been just amazing. Um, so, yeah, I'm a little prouder of having been in the film today than I probably was 30, 40 years ago. Uh, that makes me happy to hear because, like you, um, obviously, when you just see the critics, uh, the, that critic especially review. Uh, but you may, you don't make movies for critics; you make them uh, for the audience, and and to know that people love it. And now there's a special edition that people can buy. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, you know, you got to see this and, uh, and I know that people love it. It's a, I'm constantly amazed. Mm-hmm. The production values are not what you call uh, superior. Uh, the plot, if you think about the plot, it is interesting to some extent. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, dream sequence was hidden pretty well. Uh, there were enough differences that if you were paying close attention, you could tell 
that about the last three quarters of the film were were a dream sequence rather than a, something actually going on. Mm-hmm. Um, when I woke up from falling down in the cave, I had shorts on, not long jeans. Um, that was one thing. At, everybody's costume changed in the film at that point. Both women all of a sudden were wearing exactly the same dress. Uh, Nader, Nader's uh, black leather jacket had disappeared. Uh, he wasn't wearing it anymore. Uh, John Mylong's uh, costume had changed. All of us had, our clothes had changed. <clears throat> but, uh, but it's not very evident unless you're looking for it. All right. Yeah. So uh, I really enjoyed watching it and I, I've never seen it with an audience. And uh, I assume if anyone ever had a chance to, that is a, a fun uh, way to see the movie with a bunch of people who also love it. And, uh, but I get the, uh, get the special Blu-ray. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, I really appreciate you coming on today and talking with me. No problem. If you have any listeners in the Pittsburgh area, I'll be there, uh, with the film, uh, to be shown at monster bash in October. Oh, sweet. Very cool. I'll, I'll make sure to include that, uh, on the website. Very cool. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Ron Adams, who runs that, uh, that show, uh, Mm -hmm. will be happy that you do that. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Very good. And I hope to, I hope to meet you sometime at one of these, uh, at one of the festivals or conventions. Where are you? I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, that's but right. I well, travel around sometimes. Well, come on down to Pittsburgh. <laughs> All right. That's not too far. <laughs>